In today's episode, Simon Galt shares another one of his amazing kitchen hacks. Charles George from Colonial Hot Tubs shares some tips on how to make over your backyard. The Smarter Mortgage Lady is back with some amazing tips for first home buyers. We head to Waiheke Island to find out how Ananda Tours takes you on the experience of a lifetime. And finally, we check out the amazing cuisine at Jerome Restaurant in Parnell. Hey everybody, I've just cooked some scrambled eggs in a stainless steel pan and that's it afterwards. See how they haven't stuck? Let me show you. I did a video showing my eight year old how to cook fish fillets and how they don't stick in a stainless steel pan. And then Anthony asked how to cook scrambled eggs because he had a problem with them sticking and I feel like he's not alone. So let's have a go. A pan too hot and everything will stick and burn. A pan not hot enough and everything will stick. The key is preparation and having everything ready. So I've got my scrambled egg mix ready, I've got a plate ready to put it on, I've got my kokovo ghee which I'm going to use instead of butter today, which by the way is New Zealand grass fed butter, coconut oil and avocado oil mixed together. So delicious and my eggs are ready if I want to cook some more eggs, which I probably don't, but I've got some salt, I've got some pepper and I've got a spatula ready. Let's get the pan on the heat. I'm starting with a cold pan so you can see I can touch it. No problems at all. I'm now turning it on to a medium high heat. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to make my scrambled egg mix. All right, I've got a little bowl of water and a half teaspoon measure there. And what I'm looking for is to be able to hold my hand above the pan, not touching it, for about five seconds and then it would be too hot and I need to take my hand away. That's how I check it, but there is a fail safe method where we use the water. And I'm going to show you and that's called the mercury ball effect. So if I put water in now, you can see nothing's going to happen to it at all because the pan is not hot enough at all. And it's heated up a little bit more, I can start to feel some heat coming through and I'll pop a teaspoon of water in there still, it's starting to little bubble away and it's going to evaporate. Not hot enough, if we put anything in there now it will stick for sure. I'll just get rid of that water. Now you've got a little time to hit the subscribe button, have you ever done that before? A lot of you guys come to watch my videos via Facebook but it really helps me out if people subscribe. It's free and it's not hard and you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment. So maybe think about that while we wait for this pan to heat up. Still, I can hold my hand there for ages. It's not hot enough at all. It's gonna take a little while. Right, we'll try again. Put it in, see it evaporates quite quickly, doesn't it? But everything will stick if the water does that. We need the water to literally float on top of the pan. If the water doesn't stick, then our food won't stick. It's as simple as that. Let's have another go. Now you can see there's some tiny balls coming up here, so we are getting closer. Have another feel here. So I don't normally do the water test. I do this with my hand and just hold it just above the pan surface. And after I can hold it there for five seconds and then after that I can't, it's time to start cooking. I've got everything ready, that's key, because once the pan's the right temperature, we want to pop it in there. Again now, you see how we've got this ball? One ball, that is perfect. See, it's just gliding over the surface there. We're at exactly the right temperature. So we'll get rid of that. I'm gonna turn the heat down a whisker. I'm going to get my kokovo ghee in here, which will start melting. And what I want to do is just lift the pan up and ensure that it is everywhere. There we go. And in go our egg mixture. 
and just leave it for a second or two and watch this. Look how it doesn't stick. And we can just allow the egg to escape everywhere else to start cooking. And look at that. And I want creamy eggs, so it's important that I don't totally cook it because the heat of the egg will keep it cooking afterwards. So it's a little bit omelette -y, but you can, I'm just trying to really demonstrate here how it just does not stick to the pan. And it's done. And look, just shuffle it off there and you've got creamy egg. And look at that pan. Nothing stuck to it. Shall we try a fried egg? So whilst that pan is just heating up a little bit, it's probably getting a wee bit hot there, I'm going to crack the egg into a bowl. Don't crack it on the surface of on the corner. Crack it straight down like that, and that way you'll get an even crack. So again, get some ghee in here. it around a little bit, there we go, and we will bring the egg right down to the pan, let's move in a little bit, there we go, I've got to use fresh eggs, I'm using these beautiful true eggs, which we sell at my deli, now let's have a look, See? not sticking at all. Now, if you wanted sunny side egg, eggs, I would put a lid on right now, but I kind of like them over easy. Hope that helps, and I'd love you to subscribe to my channel. Take care, everybody. Ready to add value to your property and your life? If so, the team at Colonial Hot Tubs are here to help, using time-honoured craftsmanship that you and your family will love for years to come. Hot tubs are great for families. You'll have conversations in a hot tub with your kids that you would never have in the kitchen or in the living room. Uh, you'll create you know, memories that'll last a lifetime. Yeah, hot tub is a great addition to the backyard for a number of reasons. Uh, the investment in your backyard, you know, will add value to your house and your property and um, make it way more usable. One of our big things is, is uh, attention to detail and service. So we, we will turn up and, and show you how to use your hot tub personally. But um, it's also about having good partners that you work with to make a job run smoothly. For example, you know, a good landscaper that can make a deck look like this and the backyard look like this is, is crucial to what we do. Because whilst you can just plonk a hot tub on a deck, there's nothing quite like having it sunken in the deck like this. And the right people to do that is really important. So a hot tub is a great addition and a great investment for anybody's backyard. We all know it increases our 
Kiwi lifestyle ability. It brings our families together. It has the health benefits. It's the great Kiwi outdoor lifestyle. Get it done, mate. The whole thing is going to be fantastic. When it comes to getting onto the property ladder, it seems that the rules of the game keep changing almost every day, as do the lending rates. So here to demystify how to get your own first home, or at least get the lending for it, is the Smarter Mortgage Lady, Rachel Thompson. Kia ora and welcome to the studio. Sure, thank you. Lovely to have you here, as always. Now, you've been featured on the show a number of times because of your knowledge and expertise, but there is a bit of a story behind getting your own first time. So tell me about how that happened for you. Well, I was a single parent and I was self-employed. So there represents a challenge in itself. And I bought my first home with my sister with a little bit of help from our mum and dad. Uh, I went to the bank and my sister and I went together and they said, no, I'm sorry, you can't have a mortgage. And we're like, hang on a minute. And uh, anyway, we actually engaged a mortgage advisor and what do you know, we went back to the same bank and we ended up getting a mortgage, which is one of the reasons why I'm now a mortgage advisor. Wow. So how, was, how important was just having someone to support you through that journey? Because I can imagine trying to get, especially being a solo mum, trying to get into that home, was it quite an emotional journey for you? Yeah, it was huge. Like having someone to hold our hand and go into bat for us and actually talk us through all the lingo in the market, you know, because there's a whole lot of information that actually becomes really overwhelming. Mm, I can imagine. So why is it so hard right now for people to get a mortgage? Because it seems we're reading about it in the media all the time. Why is it so hard? It's hard because the uh, there's been changes to the lending policies. And, you know, some of that has been around uh, what you spend, what your debt is, and actually your incomes and how that's all packaged up. So as a mortgage advisor... How do you package that up to help? Because my understanding is you get a, even when there's a lot of no's, you still manage to fight the good fight and get a lot of yeses. So as part of your job, repackaging the picture or the scenario like you had to do in your own instance? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a person might go to the bank and they go, here it is, here's me. And it depends on the person that you're actually talking to, that like how they receive that information, how they put it together. Uh, and, and really, it's a matter of what your income is, what your debt is, you know, what your deposit is and, and how you actually spend. That's all part of the numbers mm. uh, to put together a mortgage application. Got it, got it. So my understanding is the, the market that's really struggling right now is the first home buyer market. And there's a real mix in that market. You've got the people who have less than 20% deposit uh, who are trying to get into the first home, the new home builds, is that correct? Yes. And then you've got the people who have more than 20% deposit. And then, of course, you've got people who have done or are doing like what you've done, which is relying on the bank of mum and dad. So... I'd love for you to share a little bit of your wisdom or insight into each of those markets. So let's start off with the people who have less than 20% deposit. What should they know right now about that journey? Uh, what they should know is that sometimes, like kind of nine times out of 10, maybe their existing bank where it's called main bank uh, might be their best place to go for a mortgage. That doesn't mean they necessarily have to approach them directly. They can actually do that through an advisor. But it means their deposit's less than 20% and therefore their mortgage is more than 80% and there's a whole lot of restrictions for lenders on how much that they can lend like to how many people in, in that market. They also need to really review what their short-term debt is because that actually affects their ability to get a mortgage. Mm. And um, and then also the market that they're buying in at the moment is really the new build. So it's that affordable housing that yep. you're talking about. And it's not just Kiwi Build. There's a number of developers out there who are putting aside a percentage of their development for first home buyers. Oh, wow. Well, I had builds. no idea. Yeah. So what about the people who have more than 20%? So they've been very diligent. Maybe their debt is a little bit lower. They may have a rogue credit card here and there. What's the scenario likely for them or the situation? Yeah, so when they've got 20% or more, they've kind of got the opportunity to review the market. So they could come to me and I could actually take them out to three or four banks. Generally, I wouldn't go to all of those banks because that might affect their 
credit rating and we don't want to do that because they've clearly done a great job of saving. So what they actually kind of, the world is their oyster a little bit and they can actually buy an existing house. So they might be the ones out there going to open homes and actually competing against others at auctions because they don't have the same lending restrictions. And uh, generally they've got low debt and they've got good incomes and they're the kind of mortgage application that people want to get their hands on. In both of those markets, how important is credit rating as well? It's huge. It's huge. Account conduct is huge. Like, Spending less than you earn is key. I've mentioned it on a number of occasions. You know, like the, the best way to actually do the best for yourself is to spend less than you earn. Uh, know your budget, know your numbers. I talk about that a lot too. And, you know, people that are using KiwiSaver, there are people who have more 20% deposit or mm -hmm. more um, by using the KiwiSaver or putting aside, you know, some extra savings as well. Got it. Brilliant wisdom right there. So the third part of your market in particular are those who are utilising the bank of mum and dad. So mum and dad maybe have some equity in an existing property already and they want to help their kids out. So my understanding is that becomes a business for, for mum and dad, right? So what are the legal implications around that or what should people know if they're going to jump into that market? Yes, yeah, so... Mum and dads, mums and dads who are being the bank, you know, for their kids for some of their deposit, some of them it can be ten or twenty thousand to three hundred and fifty thousand. And the terms of that need to be fleshed out. But mum and dad need legal advice, but so do the children. Because what if there's other siblings, you know, that mum and dad, if they passed away, uh, you know, that their estate would be divvying out that money mm -hmm. and these siblings have already had some help, but these ones haven't. So that's really, really important. There's a way that the bank will receive that kind of assistance from mum and dad. So there's some T's and C's around that mm -hmm. as well. And uh, it's really important when there's a partnership, it's first home buyers, where there's, you know, uh, 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 two people who come in with uneven equity. So they're actually needing, mum and dad want to help their daughter, but they want to make sure that their partners, you know, that if something unfortunately happened and they ended up separating and had to sell the house, the mums and dads want to make sure that their help for their children yes. is kind of considered at the beginning. So it's really important to get some legal advice and to be surrounded by a network of professionals as part of that uh, package, basically. I was going to say, too, in your professional capacity as that mortgage advisor, how much of that process, when you're working with family as well, are you jumping in there having to... Lots. Kind of <laughs> yeah, like be the ringmaster. The uh, like often I'm on Zoom calls with mums and dads and their kids and I'm going, mums and dads, you need to look after yourself. And I'm going to the kids, well, you know, you're utilising the help, but what about in your partnership if you're coming in with uneven equity? So they might need some relationship property advice. So they're planning the exit at the beginning so that everyone knows the, the terms and conditions of that agreement. Gotcha. Now, I know one of the biggest questions that, you know, because obviously you've featured on the show a few times that people have asked me. So I've had personal messages about you saying, oh, Rachel's great. She's really knowledgeable. How much does a mortgage broker cost? Uh, most of the time, nothing. So what I say to people is that my advice is free to you. My, my intention is to save you time and money. So if they're paying me, uh, generally I would only charge someone, you know, an arrange and a fee if I thought we might not get it across the line. But most of the time the bank actually pays me or the lender would pay me to help those people out. So they get all my advice and knowledge and hand-holding for no extra cost for them. And the best deal possible, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so Rachel, finally, your biggest tip that you would give to somebody if they're about to enter the property market? Uh, know your numbers. What's your deposit? You know, where's it coming from? And minimising that short-term debt so that you can go into an application to try and buy a property and get a mortgage uh, the simplest, cleanest way possible. I love it. Such great wisdom. Thank you so much. And if you want to find out more, you can actually head to her Facebook page, which is Rachel Thompson, the Smarter Mortgage Lady or known as Smarter Mortgages with Rachel Thompson, or you can head to her website, rachelthompson.co.nz. Rachel, thank you so much. A pleasure as always. Thanks for having me. If you're looking for
for a fun experience to enjoy with family and friends or a girly day out, you can't beat a trip to Waiheke Island. And it all starts here in downtown Auckland. With its mix of amazing wineries and spectacular scenery, Waiheke Island is the perfect place to have fun, escape and create memories that will last a lifetime. Brilliant team at Ananda Tours, who are actually Waiheke's longest running family owned tour company here on the island, can actually personalise or customise your tour experience to ensure you and your party have the best day ever. I'm so excited. What a day, and what a great way to celebrate a special occasion. Great food, great people, and a great experience. That's what Ananda Tours offers. Check them out online and come and experience the best of Waiheke. See you next time. Well, it seems these days finding a great place to eat that serves everybody's dietary requirements is getting harder and harder. Finding a place that's gluten-free, vegan-friendly, vegetarian, or suits low carbers like me can be so hard when you're trying to organize a lunch for family or friends. But I heard that Jerome's in Parnell actually has an amazing Mediterranean menu that has a little bit of something for everybody. So let's take a look. Hi, thank you. This place has the most amazing upstairs dining area. You are going to love it. Jerome really does have a little bit of something for everybody, even if you're a fussy eater like me. The great thing I love too is whether you want to dine in luxury upstairs or even book it for a special private function in their private dining room. They have space for everyone. So check them out. I'll share the link of their website below, but try it for yourself. I know you're going to love it. See you next time. Struggling with pain or discomfort? Joint pain, muscle fatigue, cramps or chafing? Then you need Qolium. Qolium is a range of organic and natural New Zealand indigenous plant-based muscle relief creams, cooling gels and anti-friction creams designed to soothe away aches, 
pains or skin irritation. Originally designed by a physiotherapist to support the recovery of pro athletes, Qolium muscle rubs and anti-chafing creams are a great choice for hardcore athletes, sporty kids, or those with injuries, arthritis, or daily aches and pains. So order yours now in the Guide to Better Living online store and use the coupon code GUIDE10 in the cart to secure a 10% discount. Reclaim your life and your movement with Qolium.